guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is lesson 7.5. Two objectives for this video. We're going to sketch graphs of inequalities and we're going to solve systems of inequalities. When we're graphing out inequalities, it's a lot like graphing out an equation, except we're going to use a dotted line if we've got just a plain greater than or less than symbol. If we've got a greater than or equals to or less than or equals to, we're going to use a solid line and then we have to shade the region that satisfies our inequality. Looking at our first example, we've got y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 1. We should recognize that graph as a parabola just shifted down one space. So I'm going to do just a quick sketch of our parabola. Now as far as graphing this one out, since this is a greater than or equals to symbol, we would want to draw in this graph using a solid line. So we'd get a picture that looks something like this. But now we have to decide what portion of our graph to shade. And in order to do that, it's helpful to pick out a test point. When we're picking a test point, we need to make sure that it's not on the line of our graph. So in this case, 0, 0 is a nice point that we could pick. So we're going to plug in 0, 0 for our x and y and see if our inequality is satisfied. So if we plug in 0 for our y is greater than or equal to 0 squared minus 1. Well, 0 squared is 0, and if we subtract 1 from that, it's just negative 1. So this is saying 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. And that's a true statement. So we're going to shade the region where that test point was located. It was located above the line that we drew in. So the solution to this inequality, it's all of these points that are above our parabola line. As far as our second example, it says x is greater than negative 2. With this inequality, we treat it almost exactly the same way. This does not have our equals to line underneath it, so we are going to graph it out using a dotted line. So we're looking for an x value of negative 2, and we're drawing in that dotted line going through that x value. And now again, we want to pick a test point that is not on the line. 0, 0 is available to us again. We plug in 0 for our x, and our inequality says 0 is greater than negative 2. That's a true statement, so we want to shade on the same side of the line as our point is on. In example 3, it says y is less than or equal to 3. This is going to be a flat horizontal line going through our y value of 3. It's going to be a solid line since we do have that equals 2 along with our inequality. And now we're going to pick a test point. And again, 0, 0 is available to us since our line is not going through that point. So 0 is less than or equal to 3. That is a true statement, so we want to shade on the same side of the line. Taking a look at example 4, we've got x minus y is less than 2. Now, typically when we graph things out, we want to have that y isolated. So I'm going to go ahead and move some things around real quick. I'm going to subtract that x over to the other side. Then our inequality says negative y is less than negative x plus 2. Still want y to be all by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. One thing we need to be careful of, if we multiply or divide by negative 1 when we're dealing with inequalities, we need to remember to flip the inequality symbol around. So now it's a greater than symbol. Simplifying the rest of this, we get x minus 2. Now we're going to treat this just like a y equals mx plus b equation. We've got a y-intercept at negative 2, and our slope is 1, so I'm going to go up 1 over 1. This one does not have the equals 2 piece, so it's going to be a dotted line as we graph this one out. And then again, we need to decide what side of the graph to shade. So I'm going to use that 0, 0 test point since it's available to us. So then our inequality says 0 is greater than 0 minus 2. Well, 0 is greater than negative 2. That's a true statement. So we want to shade on the same side as that point. When we're talking about a system of inequalities, it's just having multiple inequalities. And what we're looking for is the portion of our graph that satisfies all of our inequalities at the same time. So we've already graphed out all three of these in our other examples. So I'm going to start by just quick sketching out this first one. On the last page, we rearranged that and got y is greater than x minus 2. So I'm just going to sketch that one out real quick in red. With this x is greater than negative 2, we also sketched that one out earlier. So I'm going to draw that one out in blue. 
And this last one, y is less than or equal to three. I'm gonna sketch that one out in green. Now talking about this system, we said we were looking for the portion that satisfies all three of our inequalities. So if we look on the graph, there is a portion of the graph that is shaded in all three of these colors, red, blue, and green. And that region is bounded by all of our different lines. And I'm gonna highlight this in purple real quick. So going on this green line right here, and then it turns into this red dotted line, and then this blue dotted line, we've got this triangular portion, which I'm coloring in purple right now. This is the piece that satisfies all three of our inequalities at the same exact time. In this example, we're going to have to rewrite our equations before we can graph and shade. So let's start with that top one. I'm gonna subtract the x squared over to the right hand side. So we get negative y is less than or equal to negative x squared plus one. Dividing everything by negative one, remember to flip the inequality symbol around. So now it's a greater than or equal to symbol. And we've got x squared minus one. So we should recognize this as a parabola shifted down one space. So I'm going to sketch this out real quick in red. If we look at a test point, zero, zero is available to us. So if we plugged in zero, zero, we'd get zero is greater than or equal to zero squared minus one. That's a true statement, so we would be shading this portion above our parabola. Next one we're looking at, negative x plus y is less than or equal to one. So rearranging that one, I'm going to add the x over to the right hand side. So y is less than or equal to x plus one. So we've got this line with a y-intercept at one and a slope of one. So I'm sketching this one out in blue. Again, zero, zero is available to us to test out. So we got zero is less than or equal to zero plus one. That's a true statement. So we want to be shading below this blue line. And again, we want to look at the portion that is shaded by both colors. So I'm going to highlight this real quick in green. The top portion is bound by our blue line right here and our red parabola below it. And this piece in the middle is shaded by both colors, red and blue. Take a look at our top one. We've got x plus y is less than three. So I'm gonna rearrange this one. If we subtract the x over, we get y is less than negative x plus three. This one gets a dotted line since it's just less than. So if we go up three, there is our y-intercept and we've got a slope of negative one. So I'm gonna sketch this one out in red. If we use our test point zero, zero, zero is less than negative zero plus three. Zero is less than three, that's a true statement, so we wanna shade on the same side as that point. Taking a look at our other equation, subtracting the x over, we've got two y is greater than negative x plus three. Dividing everything by two, we get y is greater than negative a half x plus three halves. And sketching this one out in blue, again, this one's gonna get a dotted line since it's just greater than. Looking at our test point zero, zero, if we plug that in for our x and y, we get zero is greater than negative a half times zero plus three halves. This would say zero is greater than one, which is not a true statement. So we wanna be on the opposite side of zero, zero. So not below our line, this time we wanna be above our line. So if we're looking for the portion of our graph that is shaded by both red and blue, I'm gonna highlight this using green again. So it would be this middle portion right here between our two dotted lines. Last example for this video, I'm going to rearrange the top one. So I'm gonna subtract the x over. So we get y is greater than negative x plus three. So I'm gonna sketch that one out in red real quick. This one gets a dotted line since it's just greater than. Checking out our test point, zero, zero, zero is greater than negative zero plus three. Zero is greater than three is a false statement, so we're not gonna shade on the same side as zero, zero. We're going to shade on the opposite side. Checking out our next equation, I'm going to subtract the x over. So it says y is less than negative x minus one. So I'm gonna sketch this one out in blue real quick. 
Again, this one gets a dotted line since it's just less than. And if we test out our zero, zero point here, zero is less than negative zero minus one. So zero is less than negative one. That's not true, so we want to be on the opposite side of zero, zero. So we're gonna be below this blue line. Now we're looking for where these two shaded portions overlap. And we don't have any overlapping pieces, so we would say the solution does not exist. We could just say no solution, or we could use our empty set notation. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google Form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.